We've talked about three applications whenever it comes to the D flip-flop. You remember the flip-flop is that edge trigger device that copies D to Q whenever you have either a zero to one transition, rising edge, or a one to zero transition, falling edge on the clock input. What we haven't talked about is the latches. Specifically, we're gonna talk about the transparent latch. Now, a lot of the time, whenever we used to design our own circuit boards, um, the, the, uh, the, the interface from the processor to memory was kind of a complicated one. And the reason it was complicated was, well, when you look at the manufacturing of any chip, of any IC device, what you've got are these pins on the outside, these connections to the outside world. Every time you add a pin, a connection to the outside of a processor, you increase a number of things. You increase cost, you increase complexity whenever it comes to the circuit design, you also increase the chance that something's going to fail because typically failures occur or, or weaknesses are at the connections, at the interfaces. So what a lot of processor manufacturers do is they make it so that one pin coming out of the microprocessor serves dual rows. And a very common way to do this was to have the pins coming out of the processor. So I'm just gonna create some pins here. Not a whole lot of them. You know, I don't know, did I make eight? Yep. And these guys were served as both address and data. So you'd have an address and data zero and an address and data one and an address and data two and so forth. Now, the reason why we are um, combining these functions and, and the way it kind of worked was this. The address, whenever these pins were performing or acting as address lines, what they were doing was telling the, the, the memory device that we're, we're interfacing with, telling the memory device which memory location they were interested in communicating with, whether it was reading it or writing from it. So we needed to have the address lines active so that the memory device could know, oh, they're interested in address five. All right, so put a five on the address and data lines. Now, once the memory device had a hold of that address, once it knew which address that we were trying to communicate with, then it could turn the address off and then have those very same lines act as data lines to be able to either read data into the processor or write data out, of the, out from the microprocessor. Now, the problem was is that the memory, whenever it was busy accessing the data, it wasn't done with the address lines. So we had one additional chip here. And this additional chip, okay, there were a bunch of different types, but I'm just going to give you, a, uh, give you a, a part number if you're interested in, in looking this up. How about a 74HC573? So this is actually the chip number, and it is referred to as an octal transparent latch. Octal, eight, meaning that it was capable of handling eight bits. Now, all of these wires went into the inputs on this transparent latch. And, you know, whatever you wanted to na uh, label them, uh, you know, you could have labeled them D0, D1, and so forth, all the way down until you got to the last pin. And then on the other side of this latch, you had all your Qs. So you had Q0 all the way down to Q7. Now, this seems like we're missing a couple of things here. There were two additional lines here. Now these two additional lines, one of them was called the latch enable, LE, and it was active low. So whenever there was a zero on this, it, it, it actually performed as the clock. When there was a zero on here, all the things that came into D passed straight through to Q. All right, so when you put the address on here, this needed to be zero in order to pass everything straight through so that the address appeared on these outputs. And so what you had was the captured address on the outputs. 
The other input, which is not really important to what our discussion is right now, was output enable. And you could actually enable or disable the outputs. A lot of the time, we would just simply tie that to a logic one, uh, to a logic zero, tie it to ground, so that it was always outputting the valid value. Now we're missing one key component because the microprocessor and only the microprocessor knew whether it was displaying address on here or data on here. And so there was an additional output coming out of the microprocessor that was ALE, address latch enable. And you simply connected that to the latch enable of this chip. Now, what you did was the processor put the correct address on these address lines. It pulled ALE low. This transparent latch said, okay, I'm going to pass that address straight through. As soon as the processor, or just before the processor decided to switch the function of these pins over to data, it would pull ALE high. That would latch those values on those outputs, and now the data lines could be used for data without losing the value of the address that we had on there just moments ago. So these guys, these data lines, could also then be passed off to the data inputs of the memory device. And so you would actually have these wires split. One copy going off to the latch, transparent latch, another copy going off to the data line of the memory device. And so the processor, once again, puts address on the pins, brings address latch enable low, that address goes straight through, then it brings address latch high, Those, uh, ad that address is captured or held on this transparent latch, and then the functionality of the data went back and forth between the memory. So, there you go, an application for a transparent latch. Maybe you didn't want to get down to the board level, but you at least know why we did it. We're trying to save pins.